Welcome to Assembly Calendar. I'm Mike Friesan, and with us for our program today, Assemblyman Mark Johns. Mark Johns represents the 135th Assembly District in New York State, an assembly district that includes Monroe County. And we want to thank you folks all throughout the greater Rochester area for joining us for our program today. Mark Johns, nice to see you. Great to be here. We got lots to get caught up on here. We are knee deep in budget negotiations as it's right. taking place at the state capitol right now. But uh, you've been uh, you've been hammering a different nail, if you will, for the past uh, several weeks here at the state capitol, really trying to drive home the idea that we need to change the way things are done here at the state capitol. And right. I suppose that could include the budget process. It yeah. could include uh, just the, the way any legislation or bills come up for debate on the floor of the House. But uh, you're not, I'll say, enamored with the legislative process as it goes on here at the state capitol. Well, right. I think I was elected on a reform agenda. Uh, it's one thing to say we're going to change things, but uh, I'm talking about real reform. And uh, starting with legislative equality, term limits, uh, you know, referendum. Uh, let's allow the people to be more involved. And if you change and reform the system, you're going to wind up with better legislation and a better budget. You know, but there's a sign that hangs on on some walls across this country that says this: the sorriest words in the American lexicon are "We've always done it that way." Yeah, that's yeah. kind of like the tr the trap, the institutional trap that's in place here at the state capitol, right? Right, and you know what? If if you want to understand, I mean, we I've been here six years, so I'm in my seventh year. We've had six on-time budgets. That's a plus, but. Also, take a look at what's going on in New York State. We're losing 100,000 people out of this state, mostly upstate and western New York. 100,000 people a year. In 2010, the census came out. Guess what? We lost two congressional seats. In 2020, there'll be another census. We're probably going to lose another congressional seat. So people that want to better their lives are moving down to North Carolina and South Carolina and other places to get better paying jobs, one-third the property tax. One of the uh, one of the things we should probably open this discussion with today is that there is a light at at an end of a tunnel, yeah. and that and I think maybe a lot of people though aren't thinking about it yet that this coming November's elections, every twenty years it's yeah. required in the state of New York for there to be on the ballots on election day, an option to allow the people of the state, if they want, to have what's known as a constitutional convention, the opportunity to gather together people to change the status quo, just what we're talking about, to change the way things are done. Right. And uh, it, that may be a long shot, but I'll tell you what, if we don't start doing the real reforms that need to be done and get them done by the end of June, when session is over, I think you're going to get a real big push for the CONCON the Constitutional Convention. This year in the ballot, uh, November 7th is Election Day, 2017. On November 7th, on the back of the ballot, you can vote yes or no. Do I or don't I want a Constitutional Convention? Well, if we haven't put into, you know, into place term limits and other real reforms that people want, they're going to have a tendency to say, you know what, I know it's going to be a little costly, but I'm going to vote yes. I think you and I both know the odds of making that kind of change here, yeah. the way things are set up now in Albany, are slim to none. They, the majority yeah. seem to want to keep the power that they have with a pretty tight fist. Well, that's true, but I wasn't sent down here to go along to get along, even though that's kind of, uh, you know, the incumbency plan down in Albany. I do believe that we need, as I said, term limits. Uh, stop and think about that alone. If we had a 12-year term limit, first of all, I think people would be a little older when they ran for the state legislature. It doesn't mean that you can't do 12 years in the Assembly and then do 12 years in the Senate, 12 years in the governor's office, 12 years in Congress. I mean, that's 48 years right there. No one's saying that you can't be a career politician. We're just saying that if you're going to have a casino, let's at least shuffle the deck now and then, okay? Yeah, you know, and in fact, uh, one of the things that we've seen here in Albany in, the pa in recent years mm. are some corruption uh, cases mm -hmm. against some of the, the bigger fish in the pond, if you will, yeah. and the Assembly Speaker, the Senate Majority Leader, and they fall into that category, a person mm. who was here in office representing their district for a very long period of time. Right. Maybe there's some kind of connection there. Well, you know what they say, if uh, if we had 12-year term limits, Shelley wouldn't be looking at a 12-year term. You know? <laughs> and uh, 
right now he's facing 12 years in prison for corruption. It's true. And uh, too much power that's centralized and too few people uh, has a tendency to corrupt. And I'm not against anybody down here in Albany. I think we have a lot of smart people. But the reality is, with a lot of smart people, you get a lot of good legislation, but it never comes up for a vote. So the second thing, and maybe the most important thing we could do down here is institute the SOLE Act. S-O-L-E stands for Single Opportunity for Legislative Equality. It allows every member, majority or minority member in either house, to bring one bill to the floor every two years. One bill every term, bring it up, let's have a debate, a discussion, then an up or down vote. It'll do two things. It'll introduce legislation, which has never been introduced before, but it'll also give the people back home an opportunity to see where we stand on major issues of the day. Right, now you stood up uh, just the other day, in fact, and promoted this very piece of legislation as part of a series of rules changes that you and, and some of your colleagues got right. together and said, you know, we really need to mix things up here. We sure. need to try to make a difference. Uh, let's take a look at what you said as you uh, remarked on this proposal on the floor of the New York State Assembly, and then we'll be back. We'll be talking more about changes that need to be made here in Albany with Assemblyman Mark Johns. Uh, Mr. Speaker, we have 116 members of the Now, you, you put the idea out there, and as right. I mentioned earlier on, the majority tends to want to keep things their control with an iron fist. Right. That got rejected. Well, yeah. It, we um, Every two years we come in and we come up with a, a, a series of reforms, which I think most people would agree would make this place better. Asking for one opportunity every two years is not too much to ask. You can't ask for less. <laughs> Right. And uh, this allows members of the majority as well. I mean, consider the, in the New York State Assembly alone, we author more legislation than the U.S. House of Representatives. I mean, we author almost twice as many bills as the U.S. House. That's 435 members representing 50 states. We author more legislation, more bills than they do, and we vote on maybe 10% of those bills. Well, what are we saying, that 90% of the bills are worthless? And everybody's got a bill to cure about everything from, you know, headaches to cancer and you name it. But the reality is we're not voting on 90% of the legislation, which brings me to my next bill. I call it the FDR Act. Uh, stands for Fairness and Democratic Reform Act. And what that would do is it would allow the public, not us, not the elected officials, but after session's over at the end of June, it would give a two-month period where the public, the voting public, could go out there and take any one of our bills that doesn't pass down here, bills that we've already authored, gone through bill drafting, lawyers, constitutional co scholars have put these bills together so we know that they're, you know, structurally sound. They could take any one of these bills, get 50,000 signatures statewide, and then put it on the ballot in the upcoming election. Now, that would be more than fair. And something like term limits, which is, you know, I think the latest surveys show that 80, 90 percent of the people would vote for a 12-year term limit bill. Well, if we're not willing to pass it down here, 
let's allow the people, we say we care about the people, we do the people's work, the people's business, right. let's allow the people to vote on some of these issues. Put that on the ballot, and we've already allowed them to vote for gambling casinos. It lost in Monroe County. Uh, it, it won statewide with what, 52%? Right, it was close. Term limits would uh, get 82%. And we've allowed people to vote on a constitutional amendment for not only um, the gambling casinos, but also for uh, paperless legislature. Why not allow people to vote on some of the bills that never get voted on? So, so if you ha had your way and, and the SOLE Act and the FDR, FDR bill, bill yeah. uh, were, were to go into effect, right. what, what, would, what do you think it would be like? What, what kinds of things do you think? I mean, obviously, you're talking about the term limit legislation. Term limits, I think, is what people would, did. number one, I don't necessarily think that is even the most important issue, but people do think that is the most important issue. Uh, I think campaign finance reform, we talk about the big money that controls everything. Do you just want big money and party bosses to tell the majority members how to vote all the time? They decide what bills come up. Every bill that comes to the assembly floor passes. I mean, think about it. We never have a bill that comes up as defeated. <laughs> it's, a, you know, it, it's a miracle. Where can you go that you can flip a coin a thousand times that always comes up heads? <laughs> Only in the New York State Assembly. Campaign finance reform is kind of an interesting animal because mm. uh, depending upon who you talk to tells you what that person thinks campaign finance reform really is about. It. For example, if you talk to the governor about it, he says it's public financing of campaigns. You take the money not from the special interests or the donors, but that money for if you want to fix campaign financing, you take that money from the people, from the taxpayers. And there's a lot of members of the legislature who don't agree with that and don't think that's the right way to go. Well, yeah, I understand that, but I, I do know that if you're taking it from special interests and you're playing the tune that, you know, they give you the music, you play the tune, uh, it does cost you a lot of money that way as well, you know? I think you have to have an either or. Either you're gonna take public financing or you're gonna take special interest money. You can't take both. And when I was here my first year, we voted for something called the Fair Campaign Act, which turned out was the uh, Incumbency Re-Election Act. They were allowed, if you're an incumbent, especially a majority member, you raise 10 times as much money anyway, you could raise unlimited amount of money, and then if you had an opponent, you could go out and raise another 25,000 and match it six to one matching funds. I mean, how is, how is a challenger ever gonna ever gonna compete in that type of arena. So I do believe in leveling the playing field. I believe we should get rid of gerrymandered districts as well. That's a phrase you hear quite a lot here yeah. at the state capitol. Well, there's districts, 90% of them aren't even competitive, and that's unfortunate. The, uh, again, the way it's, what, what you're talking about, gerrymandering of, of election districts, is that again, the parties that are in power, in place at the time that the, uh, uh, l new lines are drawn every 10 years after a census right. is done, right. they get to draw the lines and they right. create these districts that favor a candidate of their party, right? Oh yeah, there's no doubt. The majority draws the lines and they do, you know, they favor their incumbent members. But uh, as I say, I got another bill for a unicameral legislature. Let's get rid of the assembly. We'll save 150 million a year. The governor's talked a lot lately about consolidation. Let's have all the villages join with the towns. Well, why don't we lead by example up here in Albany and get rid of the, you know, the New York State Assembly. We'll just have the Senate only. We'll save 150 million a year. Think where that money could go. Lots of amazing ideas. We're out of time today. We'll be talking more about this as we get closer to Election Day, Sounds November good. 2017. Mark Thank Johns, thanks for joining us today. Thanks for having me. Thank you folks too for spending your time with us. We'll hope to see you soon for our next edition of Assembly Calendar. <laughs>